Hello and welcome back to A Christmas Carol, Annotate with me. I am Miss S. Feel free to pause the video here while you go and grab your copy of A Christmas Carol that you've been annotating with me, um, a pen, a highlighter and your copy of this revision booklet as well that you might have printed off by now. If you haven't printed it off then this a link for this is in the description box below so feel free to print it off when you're ready I will be referring to this at the end of the video and we'll be adding quotations to it that are key um, so I will just recap on what we did um, in the last video so we met um, young Scrooge who was in school we got the impression that he was neglected, he was left alone in school and the only form of company he had were storybooks and he seemed really excited by these storybooks. We also saw a glimpse of um, Scrooge feeling extremely guilty for the way he treated the carol singers. So we, see, we begin to see a changing Scrooge but we also begin to see a vulnerable Scrooge who we've not met before. Um, so we begin to pity him and empathise with his character a bit more. We are now carrying on with stave um, 2 where we meet his sister. Um, so let's begin. The ghost smiled thoughtfully and waved its hand saying as it did so, let us see another Christmas. So they're going to go and see a, another Christmas in the future, but still when Scrooge was little. Scrooge's former self grew larger at the words, and the room became a little darker and more dirty. The panels shrunk, the windows cracked, fragments of plaster fell out of the ceiling, and the naked laths were shown instead. So we spoke about the neglect of the classroom and the school, um, and I also... Um, told you to um, research on um, Dickens's views of the Victorian schooling system um, because he is extremely critical about the uh, about the schooling system in the 19th century um, so it's really important that you do a bit of research on that please let me know in the comments what you found out about the research that you did do if you did manage to get that done but here we see that the school has fallen further into neglect okay so even it's got even worse now as the years have gone on or as one year has gone on but how all this was brought about Scrooge knew no more than you do he only knew that it was quite correct that everything had happened so that there, were, there he was alone again when all the other boys had gone home for the jolly holidays so um, last time we met Scrooge he was left alone in the school as well during Christmas time and here we see him again another a year later um, still alone in the Christmas building when um, all his peers have gone home so we see the parental neglect he faced yet another year where he was left alone during Christmas while the rest of his peers went home to enjoy the festive season with their families so we begin to again pity him and empathize with his character a bit more he was not reading now but walking up and down despairingly so Scrooge no longer has the extreme resilience and exuberance of youth to drive him into his escapist world of the novels a year or so longer at the school has just made him despair and tip almost over the edge. So previously we saw a Scrooge that really delighted in, char in the characters that he read of in the novels. He seemed to escape through his novels. He seemed to find solace in reading. But he has um, become so miserable now. Um, because of the neglect that he's faced, because of his loneliness, that even reading has um, left him. He's, he no longer finds solace in reading um, and he's now in complete and utter despair. Scrooge looked at the ghost and with a mournful shaking of his head glanced anxiously towards the door. It opened and a little girl, much younger than the boy, came darting in. So the verb choice darting reveals the excitement of little Fan immediately. So Fan is his sister. And putting her arms about his neck and often kissing him, addressed him as her dear, dear brother. So we've got the lexical and or semantic field of affection um, used throughout this passage, which emphasises the endearment between Scrooge and Fan, and therefore the impact of Scrooge um, telling of her death later on we find out that she died is more pitiful for the readers 
I have come to bring you home, dear brother, said the child, clapping her tiny hands and bending down to laugh, to bring you home, home, home. So here, the adjective tiny is used to make, to make Fan seem vulnerable, and the repetition of home shows how excited she is, which shows her innocence and presents her as adorable as well. The repetition and the exclamation also emphasise the, um, the relief she has to have him um, returning home, so not just the excitement, but also the relief to have him home. Home, little Fan, returned the boy. Yes, said the child, brimful of glee. Home for good and all, home for ever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home's like heaven. So here, Dickens makes us explicitly aware that Scrooge's home was an unpleasant place to grow up. One of the themes of the novella is the importance of family. So it is clear here that Scrooge is tainted, so destroyed, destructive, um, broken familial experiences, so experiences with family, shaped his future. So we also get the impression that his father was abusive and the fact that he never went home for Christmas emphasises the degree of parental neglect that he faced. It makes us again empathise with Scrooge um, and realise why he ab abhors human contract, uh, contact, so he hates human contact and also realise why he doesn't form close bonds and prefers to remain busy in matters of business and money. Perhaps um, it's, he, he does this to distance himself from the trauma that he faced as a child. So remember, part of the marks that you get for AO2 um, is for your own opinion. So this is obviously just my opinion. Um, feel free to make your own opinions and pop them in the comment um box below i'd love to hear what your opinions are and what your interpretations of these quotations that i've picked out are he spoke so gently to me, to me one day and night when i was going to bed that i was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home so he, she must have asked a few times for scrooge to come home and her father must have got angry at her we get the impression um, here that he must have got angry but here she was he was so gentle with her that she she, she plucked up the courage to ask again whether you can con come home whether Scrooge could come home and he said yes you should and sent me in a coach to bring you and you're to be a man said the child opening her eyes and are never to come back here but first we're to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in all the world so we see um the constant use of hyperbole, so over exaggerated language, so with the with merriest with, with merriest time um, and um, homes like heaven to emphasize little fans' innocence. You are quite a woman, little fan, exclaimed the boy. She clapped her hands and laughed and tried to touch his head, but being too little, laughed again and stood on tiptoe to embrace him. So we, we see another extremely endearing image of Scrooge and little fan to make readers sympathise more with Scrooge's loss later. So like I said, later on we find out that little fan actually died. Then she began to drag him in her childish eagerness towards the door, and he, nothing loth to go, accompanied her. A terrible voice in the hall cried, Bring down Master Scrooge's box there. So here we've got the semantic field of um, fear or terror um, with the um, way the, this particular teacher is presented. And in the hall appeared the schoolmaster himself, who glared on Master, on Master Scrooge. So let's just highlight, um, terrible voice, glared, so that's like scowling at him, with a ferocious condescension, and threw him into a dreadful state of, of mind by shaking hands with him. So made him feel really, really awful with the way he was shaking his hands. 
really vigorously. He then conveyed him and his sister into the veriest old well of a shivering best parlour that ever was seen. So again we've got the imagery of a dejected school building, a neglected school building, again tapping into um, some of Scroo uh, some of Dickens's own views of, of the Victorian school system and his criticism of, of the Victorian schooling system. Where the maps upon the wall and the celestial and terrestrial globes and the windows were waxy with cold. Here he produced a decanter of curiously light wine and a block of curiously heavy cake and administered instalments of those dainties to the young people at the same time sending out a meagre servant to offer a glass of something to the postboy. So meagre means stingy or, or little in this instance, or small shriveled servant, so again neglect, a neglected servant, who answered that he thanked the gentleman, but it was the same tap as he had tasted before. He had rather not. Master Scrooge's trunk being by this time tied on the top of the chaise, the children bade the schoolmaster good-bye good -bye right willingly, and getting into it drove gaily down the garden sweep so they relieved to get away from the school, the quick wheels dashing the hoar, hoar frost and snow from off the dark leaves of the evergreens like spray. So it's almost like the wheels of, um, of the cart can't wait to get away from this horrible place. Always a delicate creature whom a breath might have withered, said the ghost, but she had a large heart. So here we've got the use of delicate creature, withered. Um, we're reminded here of Fan's delicacy and fragility in the descriptions of Tiny Tim later. So we see um, a similarity between the way Dickens describes Tiny Tim, who we meet later on, and Fan. Um, here, So it's clear that the ghost needed Scrooge to see his little sister again to feel fully empathetic of the Cratchits. So by combining your knowledge of Little Fan and then later on when you meet Tiny Tim as well, in your exam responses by combining your um, knowledge of how they're similar um, and how this encouraged Scrooge to empathise further with Tiny Tim would give you marks for both AO1, Assessment Objective 1 and AO3. AO3 isn't just historical context or writer's ideas. It's also knowing where things are placed in the in the novel or in the text that you're studying. So if you show that you are aware of um, the similarities between characters um, and how uh, Dickens does this in a self self conscious manner, in a in in um, a manner that is supposed to be purposeful. Then you will also get marks for AO3 for knowing the pl the novel really well. So she had cried, Scrooge, you're right, you're right. I will not gain. So so she had cried, Scrooge, you're right. I will not gain. Say it, spirit. God forbid. She died a woman, said the ghost, and had. As I think, children? One child, Scrooge returned. True, said the ghost. Your nephew. So here the ghost is speaking about Fred, who we met, met earlier and who Scrooge was extremely cold towards. And he remember we, we spoke about how, ne how um, Fred is the direct opposite to Scrooge. So he's warm-hearted, kind, selfless, um, giving, loving, affectionate. All the things, actually, that Fan was whereas Scrooge is the complete opposite of this. Scrooge seemed uneasy in his mind and answered briefly, yes. So he's uneasy, but he doesn't say anything, so we don't know what he's thinking, but we can we get the impression that he's feeling guilty. Although they had but that moment left the school behind them, they were now in the busy thoroughfares of a, of a city, where shadowy passengers passed and repassed, where shadowy carts and coaches battled for the way, and all the strife and tumult of a real city were. It was made plain enough by the dressing of the shops that here too it was Christmas time again, but it was evening and the streets were lighted up. So I'm going to stop here now because the next section moves on to Scrooge when he's a bit older. Um, so I'm going to take you, um, show you the revision booklet where we have collected the quotation. We have collected these quotations here um, last time. 
so it's just these quotations here that you need to make a note of you might want to pause the video here so that you can make a note of them you can see here that I have used ellipsis so dot 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 to shorten the quotations and you can do this in the exam um, as long as you are using the main parts that you're going to analyze it's fine so I have come to bring you home dear brother to bring you home 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 so here I'm just going to make some notes on context really briefly um, so let's make it the text a bit bigger So Dickens's criticism of the Victorian schooling system is ma <coughs> made explicit in this section of the novella as we see how isolated, um, neglected and unkempt the school building is. So it's almost like the school building is symbolic of, ho of how hopeless the schooling system was. Okay, so you can pause it here, make these notes if you want to in your copy of the booklet. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe on our, vi on our videos if you are finding them useful um, because we'd be really, really grateful if you could do that. Thank you so much again for joining us and I'll see you next time.